Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking you through how to carry out a wetland bird survey. A wetland bird survey normally consists of transect lines running through a reserve. Today I'm at Croxall Lakes and I'm going to show you through and talk you through how I conduct this survey. When carrying out a wetland survey, it's important to have multiple points from which you can view all areas of the water. For those of you that do not know, a wetland bird survey involves the counts of birds such as wildfowl, cormorants, uh, waders, gulls and terns. The wetland bird surveys happen during winter because this is when numbers are at their peak. During the summer months, species that are still present are counted under surveys such as the breeding bird survey and the nesting record scheme. The importance of carrying out wetland bird surveys includes monitoring changes in population. As an example, what I'm about to show you is a great white egret. A great white egret is a visitor. I'm sorry. A great white egret is a resident bird which has recently colonised the UK in vast numbers. They arrive from Europe and are here as a result of global warming and climate change. I will now show you the fundamentals of a wetland bird survey and the importance of having transect lines. This is a map of Croxall Lakes, the site I will be surveying today. As you can see, there are two water bodies, the lake on the left and the smaller lake on the right, as well as the River Trent. When conducting a wetland bird survey, it is important to designate different sections of the reserve in which to base your survey off. As an example, today, the lake on the left will be split into two halves. The River Trent, where it passes underneath the railway line, counts as a third section, whilst the fourth lake stands as a section on its own. If you've got clear paths designated, it is easier to set out your transect line this way. And if it's a nature reserve, there are likely points anyway in which you can monitor the birds. These are called fixed points and are frequently used when surveying birds. Often, a wetland bird survey is divided into four sections. But if you find you have more than one section of water on your reserve or where you're surveying, then include the extra water body as the closest point to the designated site. As an example, a habitat such as this is not an official area on my wetland bird survey, but I've recorded water rail and Chetty's warbler here, so it's important to take them into account when you're surveying. I will get back to discussing wetland bird survey in a moment, but I thought now is the opportunity to show you how a breeding bird survey works. A breeding bird survey is created and normally runs parallel alongside hedgerows. Once again, breeding bird surveys are transect lines and you walk through an area without diverting and you make note of any nests, nesting activity or mating that you encounter along that transect, plotting the species and location using coordinates. A habitat such as this, for example, at Croxall Lakes will be a very good breeding site for numerous bird species. Ideally, you would have designed, you would have visited the area and designated the, the areas in which you want to survey. As an example, you need areas that are clear and with clear sight through to most of the water. This isn't a rule that's set in stone, but if conducting a web survey, it is recommended that you only count the birds that are actually underwater or in the vicinity. You do not count birds which are flying over the reserve 
as you do not know their origins. This is of course an exception if the species you observe is very rare or rare to the area that you're surveying. As well as counting the wetland birds, it is also important to monitor some of the terrestrial species you find whilst out surveying. As an example, when I've been surveying here during my wetland bird surveys, I've observed greenfinch, bullfinch, field fair, red pole, and Chetty's warbler, which are all quite significant species for the area, not because they're rarity, but because some of these are in decline or recently new to the area. Although I should stress that you do not put these on your sheets for a wetland bird survey. If the species are present and nesting, then you do, then you do place them on your breeding bird survey form.